the S&P 500 is up 15%, over 15% year to date. And even now there are some dividend growth stocks that are on a discount. Today, we're going to be talking about five dividend growth stocks at 52 week lows. Now, this does not mean that these companies are cheaper. These companies are expensive. A 52 week low is just a signal of price action. We're going to be reviewing them. What I think about each of these individual companies. And usually a 52 week low is a good time to just take a look and see what's going on there. So we're going to be doing this for five dividend growth stocks. They're near their 52 week lows. I think some of them are very high quality companies with great buying opportunities at current market prices. And even though the market's hitting all time highs, this is happening mostly because a lot of this, yet actually most of this is driven by big tech and a lot of it is driven by NVIDIA. Before we get into it though, let's roll the intro. I have been a rich man and I have been a poor man and I choose rich every time. I make investing content and my channel is Dividend Dude. You should leave a like and subscribe if you're going to enjoy the video. A disclaimer, this is not financial advice. I am just a dividend growth investor trying to share my takes on dividend growth stocks and various other stocks. This is not financial or investment advice and always do your own due diligence before investing. All right, guys, the first stock we have here is one I've literally been talking about again and again and again, and I feel I, I just need to drive this point home, and it is Hershey's. This one is near a 52-week low uh, at current market prices, and this is one that I actually am very, very close to buying, and I believe to be a high-quality company. In the past year, it's down 30%. A year to date, it's only down 2%, turning about flat. In the past five years, it's only up 32%, which I think it should be up a lot more. This company is trading at under a 19 forward price to earnings ratio, and the dividend yield is sitting at 3% right now. We can take a look at the financials of Hershey's, where you can see the total revenues of the company in recent years have grown quite consistently. They own so many good and uh, so many good brands in the confectionery space, which is the chocolate space, and many good brands in the salty snack space. We can take a look at the cash flows of the business. Where despite revenues being a little bit stagnant, net income has not seen those effects. Net income has grown extremely consistently, as well as the biggest intrinsic value driver of a company, which is that free cash flow per share. That free cash flow backs the dividend growth rate of Hershey's, which the dividend yield sitting at 3% on a forward basis with a payout ratio of under 50% and a dividend growth rate of 12.15% makes this one extremely attractive with a dividend growth history of 14 years. In terms of dividend history, over the past 10 years, this one has gone from paying $0.49 cents to $1.37 in dividends, and the valuation of Hershey's is actually looking quite attractive. We could see at an 18 uh, and 18 forward price to earnings, about 26 and 23% cheaper than historical averages on a price to cash flow basis, 17 and 13.4 is about 8 and 45% cheaper than averages, and their dividend yield is about 43% higher than where it's usually at, signifying significant undervaluation baked into that current price of Hershey's. In terms of their capital structure, the company does have a little bit of debt, but nothing that can't be covered with the cash and free cash flow the company pumps out on an annual basis. This one is the first dividend growth stock at 52 week lows and one that I actually do believe to be a buy right now and one that I'm very close to buying myself. The next stock that is close to 52 week lows is the consistent company Johnson & Johnson. They're sitting at $148.75 and their 52 week lows of $143. This one is a high dividend yield of 3.33%, but unlike Hershey's, I actually view Johnson & Johnson to be a little bit of a lower uh, growth company. It, the quality of the company is probably um, the same, maybe even a little bit better because it's more of a necessity. It's a lot larger of a business, but year to date, this one's down about 5%. Past year, down 9%. Past five years, only up 5%. Despite the financials of Johnson & Johnson, revenues have grown very, very slowly. We can see that uh, revenues have barely grown. On terms of the cash flow statement, net income looks all right. We have a spike in the most recent year. In terms of the biggest intrinsic value driver of company, free cash flow per share has really gone nowhere um, over the past five years, it actually looks like it's kind of decreased. So my main concern with Johnson & Johnson is actually the growth of the company. It's a necessity in the healthcare space and obviously a very consistent company. But where is that growth coming from is honestly my concern. In terms of their dividend, they do pay a dividend of 3.33%, which we covered. The payout ratio looks solid and the dividend growth rate is a little bit low, but that dividend growth history is astounding. They're a dividend king with over 60 years of dividend growth. 
On a valuation side, it actually appears to be somewhat undervalued at a current valuation of 14.2 price to earnings. 14.1 on a forward basis puts it at 16.1 and 14.9% cheaper than historical averages. On a price to cash flow basis, 14, uh, I mean 15.4 and 14.6 puts it about 15 and 11% cheaper than historical averages. The current dividend yield is about 20% higher. So this one seems to be a little bit undervalued as well. The capital structure of this one, it does have a little bit of debt, but it has most of the cash to cover it. And $7 billion in difference from that debt is not anything too significant. So Johnson & Johnson with a good balance sheet, solid fundamentals, a great quality business. My only concern with this one is the growth of the business, where that's going to come from. That's kind of, uh, that's really my only concern with Johnson & Johnson. Next, all right, the next company we have is Starbucks, ticker symbol S-Bucks. 52 week low of $72, right now sitting at 79 about. Um, it's a little bit farther off than the other ones, but the reason is obviously that stark earnings drop, and it's still at a significant discount, down 21.6% last year down 16.8 percent year to date you could see on the five-year chart that big drop after earnings and you can see how much of a discount this company really is over the past five years down five percent despite many things uh positive happening for the company but they're just facing a ton of short-term headwinds right now which creates long-term buying opportunities for us investors and this why this is why this one's in my portfolio as well with many the economics of the rewards app that they have is just beautiful. They have the unique characteristic with the rewards app and the branding around their coffee is one of a kind. We could take a look at the financials of Starbucks or the revenue out of the other two companies we covered. Starbucks revenue chart looks the best. The revenue has grown uh, extremely consistently over the past 10 years. We could take a look at the cash flow statement of Starbucks, which still looks good. The net income is growing in terms of the biggest intrinsic value driver of a company, in my opinion. That free cash flow per share is growing, obviously a little bit of choppiness with 2018 spike and COVID, but if we just eliminate those, the growth track is clear. And as they increase store count and generate more money, that free cash flow per share will grow. The dividend of Starbucks is quite nice. At a dividend yield of 2.85%, they have a payout ratio that's a little bit high, but a five-year growth rate of 9.25% with a history of 13 years. I believe this dividend growth rate should reaccelerate when they stop with these short-term headwinds, and that free cash flow is a little bit more bol bolstered, driving down that payout ratio. Dividend history over the past 10 years, uh, at 13 cent dividend to 57 cents in dividend, so that dividend has grown extremely consistently. The valuation of Starbucks is looking quite attractive um, on a trailing 12-month price-to-earnings basis, 22 and 22.3 on a forward basis. We can see it's about 27 and 37% cheaper than historical averages. On a price-to-cash flow basis, 14 and 17 is about 55 and 29% cheaper, and the de current dividend yield is about 41% higher than the five-year mean. In terms of capital structure, Starbucks does look like it has a little bit of debt, but as I said many times, half of that debt is in capital leases, so just rent. So they really have about $12.5 billion in debt, which is about uh, a quarter covered in cash right now. And the cash flows the company generates is more than enough. That's not a dangerous amount of debt. And yeah, so Starbucks is another one like Hershey's that I believe to be quite attractively priced at current prices. The next company near 52-week lows is actually PepsiCo. A lot of these companies that are just consistent dividend growth companies are trading down right now. And obviously interest rates are affecting that, but there's many other reasons for that. And they're near 52 week lows as the S&P 500 is hitting all time highs. And I think there's gonna be a significant rotation to companies like this. And these ones are going to start trading a little bit higher, but they're offering discounts. And obviously if they're at 52 week lows, we're gonna cover them. PepsiCo is just part of that case, kind of like Hershey's, but with the snacks, not as many confectionery and chocolate snacks, but a lot of salty snacks and big in the beverage space. They're down 10% in the past year, down about 1.5% year to date. We can see at a 4P of 20.5, it's a little bit more expensive than Hershey's. In terms of financials, the revenue looks very similar to Hershey's revenue chart. As they started leveraging their pricing power, the revenue growth has stayed the course. In terms of net income, it's grown extremely consistently as well. Biggest intrinsic value driver of these companies, that free cash flow per share has grown. I mean, it's been a little bit of stagnant, but despite this, the dividend has grown pretty, pretty fast. I mean, 6.6% is all right, but the dividend history being 51 years is very strong. Payout ratio of 65% is fine for a company like this, and the dividend yield is pretty high at 3.24%. The dividend history, they've gone from paying 
uh, about 57 cents in dividends 10 years ago to now $1.36 in dividends. So a big increase there. In terms of the valuation, it's cheaper than historical averages. We can see right off the bat, 21.6 and 20.5 is 13 and 16% cheaper to the five-year means on those price-to-earnings ratios. Price-to-cash flow 18 and 17.2 is about 10 and 11% cheaper than historical averages. Dividend yield is about 12% higher than historical averages. So it's about it's cheaper than historical averages. A high quality business. This one actually has a good amount of debt, but the market cap of 230 billion, debt of 45 billion, and cash of 8.4 billion. The debt does seem manageable, maybe a little bit on the higher side, but definitely not unmanageable debt. The next company on this list is actually MSCI, which is probably the highest quality company just off sheer like quality of the business and growth factored into quality. Um it's near that 52 week low, 46. We could see that stark drop after earnings. And over the past five years, MSCI is still up 110%. But you could see that it's been on a little bit of a dip and struggle. So you would think the financials would not be improving. But despite that belief, the total revenues of the company have grown year over year over year for the past decade. Cash flows of the business have grown even faster, net income hitting an all time high. And just continuing to grow. We could scroll down and take a look at the free cash flow per share of the company, which honestly just looks like video game like growth. I mean, that free cash flow per share is the best out of the other four companies that we have covered and hitting all time highs as of recently. We could take a look at the dividend here with a lower yield compared to the other ones, but this is more than made up for worth the low payout ratio and high growth rate of 21%. Over the past five years, the dividend history of this one over the past 10 years, they've gone from paying about 18 cents to a dollar and 60 cents in dividends. So that dividend has grown exponentially. In terms of the valuation, we could see that it's cheaper than historical averages. This one is probably the most richly valued, but at a 35 and 33 price to earnings ratio, that's still 27 and 25% cheaper to historical averages. And our price to cash flow base is about 23% cheaper. And that dividend yield is about 40% higher than where it usually sits at. So MSCI is certainly attractive. The debt is very insignificant compared to the cash they have and the market cap of the business. And that is the last company rounding out the list. Five dividend growth stocks near 52-week lows. Um, some of them I like more than others. Some are in my portfolio and some I'm very close to buying. If you did enjoy, please make sure to like and subscribe to never miss a video. Also turn on the bell and follow my X slash Twitter. I am very consistent on there. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good one. Peace.